Hi, how are you doing today? This is Rich here on behalf of Rich TV Live with our very special guest. It is Keith Newmeyer, the president and CEO of First Majestic Silver Corp. How are you doing today, Keith? Uh, not too bad, uh, Rich. Uh, nice meeting you for the first time. My pleasure. Now, we're really excited to speak to you today. First Majestic Silver has been doing quite well recently. And since the March lows of $11.99 an ounce, silver has been nothing short of amazing. Its price is up more than 100% and still hasn't made any mainstream media headlines at all. What is the primary catalyst for the surge in the price? And what do you think could happen next? Well, you know, quite honestly, I wouldn't call the uh, move amazing. Um, it's, it's long has been long anticipated and uh, you know, I'm a triple digit silver guy and uh, you know, I've, I've coined that phrase, phrase years ago and I, 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 I call silver a very strategic metal. You know, it is precious of course, but it's required in everything that we do, including this um, Zoom call could not be done without silver. So, you know, I think that the silver, you know, price at around 25, 26 bucks an ounce, which we're currently seeing today is, is um, is still dirt cheap. Um, you know, it should be much, much higher. And, uh, you know, the ratio around 70 to one, 75 to one is a uh, more traditional ratio for it. Um, silver lagged uh, up until really just recently. Um, you know, we had the silver ratio spike all the way north of 100 to one in March, as you just pointed out, when silver, you know, collapsed with the, the financial markets um, you know, and oil prices, of course, collapsed as well. So a lot of things were getting sold and, you know, most everything has rebounded. Uh, you know, gold's back up to its normal levels and uh, Tesla's, you know, at new highs and, you know, the, the stock market, the S&P, uh, you know, everything seems to be at new highs. So, um, you know, the view out there is that we're back to normal and the economy is improving itself. And, uh, um, you know, silver is being looked at as a very key metal for, all the things that we need to do as a human race to electrify the planet in the ways that we need to do it. And uh, uh, finally, it's getting a bit up, which is uh, great to see. Now, what sort of, you touched on this a little bit, but what sort of gold silver ratio could we see before we turn the, the precious metals bull market as matured and towards its end? Well, calling a beginning or an end of any bull market is uh, kind of a fool's game. You know, it's, it's uh, you know, I, you know, myself, I'd love to have a crystal ball and be able to know when to trade a stock or trade a commodity, uh, uh, you know, hitting its highs and lows, you know, who, you know, who um, actually knows, right? Sorry about that. Um, but, uh, you know, this bull market started, I think, in uh, early 2016. And, uh, you know, we had silver get down to the $13 range in, in early 2016, and it rallied, um, you know, into about the $21 range and took a pause throughout 2017, 2018, as the trade, you know, um, uh, really was the U.S. equity markets. And, you know, I look at this as very similar to what happened in 2000, 2001, you know, where, you know, we saw very low metal prices and then and, and the major markets were rolling over. And. I'm not going to, you know, be foolish enough to call for a top in the in the U.S. stock market, but um, uh, you know, maybe you know, maybe gold can go up at the same time. You know, time will tell. But traditionally, what happens is uh, these bull markets and metals normally are are you know happen or, or 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 get underway as a result of the topping of the major equity markets around the world, and uh, we you know, we've seen glimmers of that which have been very supportive for gold. But, um, you know, this time around, it looks like it's a little bit different because, um, you know, we're being driven really by low interest rates more than anything. And uh, um, as long as the governments around the world are going to keep printing money, that's very good for the stock market and it's very good for the gold price. So, you know, we could be going into a pretty interesting environment where we have everything going up at the same time. You know, including Crazy. oil prices, including commodities, including stocks. And, you know, that's what it's really looking like. And that's a little bit different than, you know, the last bull market, because the last bull market, which started in 2012 and ended, or pardon me, 2002, and ended quite abruptly in 2012, um, uh, uh, ended with gold and silver collapsing and the U.S. market taking off. So, you know, this time around, we're having the metal prices moving, you know, with copper breaking through three bucks the other day, First time in a couple of years, uh, lensing prices are moving. Oil, of course, has recovered a lot. So, 
you know, we're seeing this inflation trade now coming into the market and, uh, you know, who knows when that could, that could end. It could go, you know, three, four, five years. But, um, um, you know, to go to the ratio, because you started the question off with that, you know, from a mining perspective, we're mining for every one ounce of gold worldwide, we're only mining eight ounces of silver. So that's a pretty shocking statistic when you look at, you know, we're trading at about 80 or 75 to one, you know, do the math or, you know, do um, uh, changes every day, of course. But, um, you know, when you're trading 75 to one and mining eight to one, that's a pretty shocking ratio. Absolutely. Now, gold has risen also, which you touched on, to new all-time highs. Bank of America is projecting 2300 by mid-2021. Goldman Sachs says 3000 There's definitely the potential for a historical bull market. How weak is the dollar in the world scene right now? Well, it has been pretty weak. Um, you know, we, we saw, you know, on the, on, the, on the major U.S. dollar index that everyone follows, you know, we were up around 101, 102, just... Um, you know, six months ago, it's now around 90, 92, 93. It's uh, up big today. Um, uh, the gold's down today, and then silver's down today, and the gold and then the dollar's up today. But I think the, you know, the, as long as um, you know the Fed continues continues to debase its currency by printing money, you know, more money you put in circulation, you know, in theory, the the value of that money, that currency should go down and. Uh, um, you know, I'm expecting the U.S. dollar to, you know, continue its bear market, you know, for the next few years. And, uh, you know, that would be very supportive for stock prices and, and, and also for gold prices. Absolutely. Now, you founded your company close to two decades ago, and now it's the purest silver miner in the world. How many mines do you operate? Back in 2017, we had seven mines operating. Uh, we're, we're all in Mexico. All our operations are in, are in the country of Mexico. Mexico is the largest producer of silver in the, in the world. And then we're one of the top uh, producers of silver in the country. And uh, today we only operate three mines. Well, I shouldn't say only, but we, we operate three mines. Uh, they're all pretty big, you know, uh, uh, world-class operations. And we're happy to have pared down our portfolio slightly over the last few years and we, we produce uh, only two metals. We produce silver and gold. 60% uh, of our, our revenues are from silver and 40% of our revenues are, are from gold. And, uh, uh, you know, we've got 5,000 employees and always looking for ways to grow the business. That's great. Now, can you compare the company to 2016? Back then, its share price was $24 Canadian. Right now, you're around $15 Canadian. Yet, silver spot price was lower. And to my knowledge, the company produced less silver at a higher cost. What is better, First Majestic in 2016 or 2020, and how? Well, probably as a shareholder, you'd probably say 2016 because you know the, the share price is actually higher. But um, you know, there there is uh, definitely uh, the miners are definitely underperforming the metals. Uh, you know, since um, you know when gold broke through, you know, fifteen sixteen hundred uh, dollars an ounce, um, and then silver was still in the fifteen sixteen dollar range. Our stock was higher than it is today. You know, with, with silver at you know twenty five, twenty six bucks, and you know gold around two thousand dollars, and and it doesn't really make a lot of sense. But um, you know these these markets do not always correlate one hundred percent. You know, you have times where the metals will outperform the stocks, and you have times that the stocks will outperform the metals, and uh, uh, you know you can never you know know for certain when that's going to happen. And explaining it's not that simple, you know, because it's all, you know, to do with money flows, you know, the, the, the big hedge funds, the big institutions, you know, they, they come in, uh, in and out of these markets quite quickly. And uh, uh, these, the, the mining sector is quite small. So, you know, you have a group of uh, pension funds or hedge funds coming into a particular stock, you know, they could, you know, do some, you know, crazy things, you know, on, on either one side or the other side of the market. If you look at the size of the silver industry, um, you know, we produce about 800 million ounces of silver annually, the miner, the miners, not for Majestic, but the mining sector as a whole. So at 25 bucks a, an ounce silver, you know, that's a $23 billion uh, industry. So one industry, $23 billion. And how many times does that industry fit into Apple? I think Apple just went through $2, $2 trillion uh, the other day, someone told me, so, uh, 
you know, 20, 20, no, 2 trillion divided by 23 billion. I can't do the numbers that quickly, but uh, like 100 so, times, it's like 100 yeah, times smaller. Yeah, yeah, almost 100 times. You're right. But uh, so Apple could buy the entire silver sector almost 100 times over. Wow. You know, it's pretty shocking. So, you know, so these stocks, you know, First Majestic, we're talking about, you know, can go up and down very quickly as a result of just the flow of capital. And, uh, you know, all we can do as a management team is continually do the right thing and reduce costs and produce more metal and, and, uh, and innovate. And, uh, you know, we're very proud of a lot of things that we do. And, you know, when, when um, you know, the market wakes up and, and looks at this bull market and says, hey, gold prices are here to stay, silver prices are, are here to stay and they're going higher. Um, then maybe you know people start rushing into the mining stocks again. But uh, I think there is a view out there that this whole silver or gold price move was very COVID related. And quite frankly, I don't think it's got anything to do with COVID. Uh, um, you know, it's all to do with money printing and interest rates. And uh, you know, the Federal Reserve came out with their minutes just today, and it was quite clear that uh, Powell is not going to be uh, uh, changing interest rates or increasing interest rates anytime soon. Um, it's quite clear that this low interest rate environment could be with us for years and years to come into the future, which is going to be great for gold prices. That's great. Well, you know what? Our entire community will be watching your story and the success of First Majestic Silver Corp. In detail, we wish you all the best of luck in your future endeavors. I'm very bullish on gold and silver. And for anyone that's watching, take a look at First Majestic Silver Corp. Very, very thankful to have you here on our show today with Keith Newmeyer, the president and CEO. Thank you for joining us today, Keith. Yeah, I would uh, suggest to your listeners to go to our website. Um, uh, you know, we didn't really talk a lot today about the company, but um, you know, there is a corporate presentation on the, on the homepage of the website, which people should look at. and. Uh, if they do have questions, you know, feel free to call us um, at any time. We have a one eight hundred number, and uh, I'm also uh, on Twitter. You know, uh, Keith underscore Newmeyer. You know, please follow me on Twitter if you care to catch up on on the most recent news of the companies I'm involved in. That's great. Well, thank you so much for your time again, Keith. Keep up the great work, and we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks, Rich. Have a great day.